following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it since it is 10 o'clock. Well, it's after 10 o'clock, um, and I'm running way behind schedule. But thank you all for joining. I'm Neek, of course, and tonight's show is going to be about a conversation I had Sunday with a few um, a few fellas. Um, one of the fellows that I was talking to had some opinions that were different from other guys that I'm used to. And I posted some of them today. And a lot of fellas were just like, no, he's wrong, incorrect. Um, we're going to talk about all of that tonight. So the first topic um that he talked about well it wasn't even topics he was just talking in general and just talking to me we were just having a conversation and in that conversation he says that men every relationship that fails badly is a man's fault now i argue with them because i don't feel like that's true i don't feel like Every man is responsible for the failure of a relationship. I believe all parties are. Should be held accountable for those, you know, relationships going badly. However. He felt like um, it's a man's fault. It's a man's job to make sure that his woman is happy. Um, is a man's job if, and this is not my opinion, this is all of his, so, because I know a few people were getting really confused about me taking up for him, or me agreeing, because I never gave my opinion on the actual post, but, according to him, it is a man's job, the man is supposed to make sure he's happy, and if he's not happy, he is responsible for letting you know that he's not happy. And he's supposed to get y'all together and figure out how to work out the, how to work out those problems. Um, if he sees that you're not happy, he's supposed to be able to identify that you're not happy. Um, he's supposed to identify why you're not happy and fix the issue. Um, if the relationship fell where a woman cheated, he should have seen that. Um, and like I said, all of this is not my opinion. This is his. Um, he feels like a man should oversee all of that. The entire relationship, he is the leader and he is supposed to lead that relationship by um, making sure everything is straight. And if something is not going right, it is his fault because he did not identify it, he was not paying any attention, he was not observing, his attention was elsewhere, therefore he failed the relationship. Um, but this, like I stated, this is not my opinion. Um, what do y'all think? And once again, I do not agree with it. I believe both parties should be held accountable. Um, I don't believe just one person should be held accountable for a failed relationship. Um, because a lot of times when it comes to women um we do have sometimes selective hearing um we hear what we want to hear um 
we like to, uh, and I mean, I can only speak for me, sometimes with some women, we do like to manipulate situations. Um, women do cheat, women do lie, so I don't believe it's all a man's fault if a relationship fails. But he says that a man is a leader and is supposed to lead the relationship. What are y'all thoughts? Because a lot of people are saying, well, I'm going to say a lot of people. I say a lot of men. A lot of men were saying, no, he's just saying that because he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get with... This man is in a relationship, um, and he was just talking. He didn't know I would post this or anything. He was just talking. This is the type of person he is. All right, Eric says, if the relationship has cleared boundaries, then whoever steps over those boundaries is at fault. I agree with that. I don't agree that it's just one person's fault. Um, if a man stepped out, it's his fault. If a woman stepped out, it's her fault. I believe it's very simple like that. I don't believe it is difficult. I don't believe all the pressure should go on the man. Um, that's really not. Fair. And I actually wish I had more men on here that I could um, add um, that could join me on the live and kind of explain why he feels the way he feels. Pretty simple, yes. Relationships are pretty simple. Relationships are not hard. Relationships are not hard at all. Um, relationships can be very simple if we allow them to be. Um, I believe when it comes into relationships, we try to put so many rules in it so we won't get hurt. We kind of mess ourselves up. Um, like I said, this is all, all my opinion. Um, but yeah, I do believe we... I do believe that we um, tend to put up our guard, and that kind of messes us up when it comes in play of a relationship. He must not be in a relationship. Actually, he is. He is in a relationship. All right, Ray says, yeah, it's our fault. We out here fucking the thickest naturalist women walking. What do you mean by that? Meaning like y'all are cheating? You have to be clear with your answers. Because cheating is not the answer at all. And all men don't cheat. So you can't say, yeah, it's our fault because we're out here screwing everything. No, all men aren't like that. All men don't cheat. Where I do feel like all men have cheated, I don't feel like all men are just out here cheating just on a regular. Okay, well, while y'all finish up those opinions, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one. Um... The next opinion, and I'm saying these are opinions because I'm not saying he is right. I'm not saying he is wrong. I'm just clearly stating that this was a very interesting conversation we had. And I just wanted to see where, you know, how y'all felt about it.
I'm just waiting to see if y'all finish. Okay. Ah. Okay, we're going to go on to the next one. Since y'all finished with that. All right, so the next topic here is going to be, um, basically he called this the man code. And he said, grown men should not be FaceTiming, sending emojis, or being group chats. Group chats with other men. How do y'all feel about that? Okay, around. And this is to the men. How do y'all feel about that? How do y'all feel about men FaceTiming each other, sending emojis, um, being in group chats with other men? How do y'all feel about that? Should men FaceTime their homeboys? Should men be sending emojis to their homeboys? Should men be in a group chat together discussing whatever? How do y'all feel about that? Should men be taking selfies? And that was a big thing, men taking selfies. Um, he also pointed at men should not sip from a cup. Okay, Eric said, if you got a homie and he too cheerful, it gives, I'm sorry, I don't even know how to say that word, vibe. So are you meaning it kind of gives it a funny vibe when your homeboy is cheerful? Like, overly cheerful. Tori says, I don't see anything wrong with men having their own group chat or FaceTiming other men. Alright, my opinion, I don't, um, I don't mind it. I don't mind it as long as me, this is my opinion, I don't mind another man FaceTiming another man. If it's for something like, oh, you know, did you see that game? And, you know, sometimes men want to see other men's expressions on their faces, especially when it comes into sports. Or if he's trying to um, show him something, I don't mind that. But if a man is laying across his bed and he just FaceTimes his homeboy like, hey, what you doing? I think I do got an issue with that. Yeah. But... Um, what I will say, um, with the group chats, I don't mind. I don't care. Um, women have their group chat. I don't, I really don't care if you have a group chat with your friends. Alright, so, Eric says, it's also different because men and that communi communicative with each other. Aren't that communica communicative with each other? Alright. Pat says, if, so if something's funny, I can't say. send my homeboy a laughing emoji. I'm not saying you can. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying what this man's opinion was. He feels like men shouldn't be sending emojis to other men. Um, men shouldn't be FaceTiming. Men shouldn't be taking selfies together. Um, this is his opinion. Now, with the whole men taking selfies together, I mean, I do have an issue with a man that takes too many selfies of himself and posts them. I do have an issue with that. I'm not going to lie. Like, that does, and this is my opinion, like I said, but that does kind of give me borderline, you know, kind of questionable. 
Like, why are you taking so many pictures of yourself? Like, I, I do, uh, Eric says that's feminine. Tori says, how is that feminine? So, basically, a man can't call his homeboy on the phone is the same. All right, Ralph says he must want to do it for other reasons. I FaceTime my homies and my pops. Chelsea says, I don't think it's that deep. Um, I don't think it's that deep either. I don't really pay attention that much to even care. Um, I've never seen anything out of the way or even heard anything, heard of any men like saying anything out of the way to another man on FaceTime. Like, even being around another man that was FaceTiming another man, like, it was because they were somewhere he wasn't. So, that was my thing. Like, okay, well, you know, your friends are showing you what you're missing. But if he's just, like, you know, laying across the bed in his robe and, like, hey, I wanted to see what you were doing. What's up? Mm-mm. No. 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 He couldn't text you. What's up? Nah. Mm-mm. All right, Eric says, I use emojis if I comment on something funny or in a text. But it's a slippery slope. I guess as a man, you would never want to seem too soft or immature. Chelsea says, I think the dude who said it is struggling with his sexuality. Um, Pat says, how? I'm not sure. How what? Um, Eric it says, it really is really not a big deal. Maybe it's an age or a techno, techno, tech, techno salary thing. Um, I don't know. Now, I will say he is an older man, so maybe, you know, his opinions are based off of his age and how he feels. Um, I'm going to go into another opinion that he did have that um, he did have some good points on um, in regards to men going to bars. His opinion on men going to bars. He said if a man is constantly going to bars, um, on a regular basis, then that tells him that man doesn't know how to, how did he put it? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get his exact words. Um, he doesn't know how to hold a healthy relationship. A man that stays at the bar does not know how to hold a self, a, a healthy, I'm sorry, a healthy, um, relationship i'm sorry y'all my tongue is tied tonight now i did disagree with him on that however he did have good points um and the point that he was making was one of the guys that i happened to see at the bar that we were at um that we were having a meeting at he said um he was married it was a sunday and i mean some people go to the bar to watch the game, especially if you have kids and you want, you know, kind of some type of quietness or you want to be able to focus on the game. You know, I feel like some men will leave their homes to go watch the game or whatever. But he felt like, no, unless it was a special occasion, um, unless, you know, there was a big game and you couldn't watch it at home, there is no reason for you to be at the bar. All right, Uno says, what if he stays at his own bar? Meaning like he's the owner of a bar? I'm okay with it. Um, I am just fine with it. I, no. He says there's no need for a man that's in a healthy relationship to go to a bar. Unless there's a special occasion, like, you know, your friend, your longtime friend came in from town and y'all want to go out and get a drink, boom, go to the bar. But if it's something you do regularly, like every other night you're sitting in the bar, the bartender knows you. Please repeat. Okay, yeah, the bartender knows you on a first name basis because you're always there. You're there every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, every Saturday. Then... 
There is a problem. Pat says how? Um, an N-word might just like going to bars. Mm -hmm. Alright, Eric says, what if he's an alcoholic? Then if he's an alcoholic, then he needs help. That's, you know, more concerning. Ralph says, bro must be 60 plus. No, no he's not. He's not that old. But he does believe in putting a woman in her place, which I know I had an issue with. Um, he believes that it was a man's job to put a woman in her place to help her follow directions. Y'all know that bugs me. Mm-mm. No. Nope. Uh-uh. Now, the funny thing that he did say about dating is the first date should be no more than $100. He said the first date should be no more than a hundred dollars. If you spend over a hundred dollars, you're doing too much. All right, Queen says I just don't want to see my man smiling and chatting slash FaceTime with his homeboys that much like girls. I don't care what kind of communication it is. Should it? Is too suspect these days. That's just me. I'm old school. And I can admit, yeah, he's real old school as well. So, I got where he was coming from. Because like I said, I don't, you know, it kind of rubs me the wrong way when I see a man taking a bunch of selfies and posting it. Like, who are you looking cute for? Who are you trying to impress? Eric says, that's only cool if she can go out with the girls all the time. It's a give and take. Hmm. No. Mm -mm. Nope. But yeah, let me go ahead and post the next question. He says, the first date should be no more than $100. And he said you should keep it real simple. Either that $100 is spent on dinner, or that $100 is spent on dinner in a movie, or um, y'all could go for a walk in the park and spend $100 on a hotel. He said it should be no more than $100. Nah, stay there. Stay here. Uh, okay. So, just getting y'all opinion. Should the first date be over a hundred dollars all right queen says i can agree ralph says price limit shouldn't matter you got to go with the vibe if you put in a price on enjoyment don't date that lane okay michael says first date might be out of town trip so i don't agree okay i'm gonna say this if you're not my boyfriend, I'm not going out of Florence. I'm sorry. No, it's not happening. Especially the first day. No, I'm not going to the beach with you. I'm not. Mm -mm, nope, I don't know you. So, I don't know who y'all be dating with these first dates are out of town. Nah. Mm -mm. I don't even know how you act. How can, I, how can I allow you to take me out of town where I can't just leave? No. No. Sorry. Franklin says, I'm in a group chat with my friends. Yeah, I don't say that word on here. But that's all up to, I mean, to each his own. All right, Michael says, it could be a concert or anything. No, on the first date, my opinion, 
on the first date, I do not believe that you should be going to a concert. I don't believe that you should be going to um, an expensive restaurant. I don't think you should be going to the movies. Like, the point of a first date is communication. You're learning who this individual is and talking, communicating. How can you do that watching a concert? How am I going to enjoy the concert with you? So now I don't waste my time going to a concert with you and you're not even that fun. No. All right, Eric says, it depends on the people, what world they come from. If you are both lawyer or a doctor, $100 is nothing. Well, I mean, I mean, to me, I feel like it's okay because at $100, it being nothing if the date doesn't go anywhere or you don't feel no vibe or a connection with that individual, you spent $100 and it was nothing to you. So you really didn't lose much. But that's just my take on it. Um, like I said, when it comes to the first date, like, I don't feel like you should be somewhere out of town. Like, I always feel like you should be, you don't know how that person acts. How can you take a girl? Like, I really, that, that is my next question. My next question is, how do you feel about a date, the first date? being out of town like you don't know me you don't know me well enough to take me on a date out of town you don't know how I act I can be alcoholic I can be crazy I can be anything but you're going to take me out of town I believe that's more into men trying to impress a woman of what he could do for her Versus actually trying to get to know her. And I believe that's how men end up with the wrong women. Because they try to go so big so fast. Like, like that's even, like, I've had a guy try to take me to a real, real, real expensive restaurant. And we weren't even there. Like, no, you don't, you don't know how I act. You don't know who I am. Like, there's no need in spending that much money on me. You don't even know me yet. Get to know me. Know that you want to spend that much money on me. All right, Ralph says, never going to do it. That's crazy as fuck. I agree. Michael says, we should have talked long enough to know who we are before we even go on a date. I mean, you're going to know something, but you're not going to know a lot. You're going to know what I like. You're going to know what I don't like. You're going to know, you know, probably a little bit of family history. Um, you know what I tell you, but you're not going to know what to see. Like, that's like, I can tell you anything. I can tell you I'm an astronaut. And you can believe it. Who knows? I can tell you I'm a model. Ain't model a day in my life. So, therefore, people can tell you anything over the phone. Like, you get to see it firsthand when you're on that date. And while you're in the movies, you can't communicate. You can't see how someone acts. Mm -mm. Sis, very, very sis. <laughs> I would take you to Timmonsville. First of all, no, you would not. I'm not going to Timmonsville. <laughs> I don't go to Simmonsville just to ride. Unless I'm going to um, True Love. Mm -mm. Eric says, no, that's a serial killer kidnappish. Exactly. What is the point of going out of town on a first date? Like, where are you trying to take me? No. That means you're paying for gas. You're paying for a restaurant. You, 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 you're spending more than $100. Like, you sound like you're expecting something at the end of the night. Mm-mm. Ralph says, boys who take women out of town on a first date, easily gone, propose in three weeks, stay away. Yeah, um, nah, I can't go out of town. Um, first date, keep it simple. Take me out to eat, 
we can laugh, we can talk, we can enjoy each other. Let's leave it at that. I will not, I repeat, I will not go out of town with you on a first date. Eric says, if you a black person, that should be an automatic red flag. Um, even if you're not a black person, that should be a red flag. No, you're not taking me out of town. Alright. Right. A smash or die situation. What's the catch? Exactly. Like, I don't see the purpose. I, I really don't see the purpose. Alright, that brings me to my next question. Sex on the first date. How do y'all feel about sex on the first date? My opinion is, I don't mind. Um, now, I will say, I'm not just sleeping with just every and anybody. I'm not just out here being a loose cannon. No. However, we are grown. We are very grown. So, shit happens. You just have to know, like, are you mature enough to handle that? All right, Tanika says, if a man spends that much money on the first date, he will automatically turn me off. Whole mode would ch whole mood, I believe you mean to say, would change. Mine too. Don't spend that much money on me. Keep keep that money in your pocket. All right, Eric says, not if you want it to last. So, you feel like sex on the first date is going to change everything? That's going to affect how that individual views you? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just trying to keep an eye on my time. Alright, Pat says, if it happens, it happens. Michael says, so you will have sex on the first date, but won't go off. Out of town, crazy. Because I'm not gonna just have sex with just anybody. Like having sex with someone on the first date, like that's a date. That means I have seen how this person acts. I have seen how this person, you know, moves. I mean, I'm with that person, and I have the option of leaving if I want to. If I go out of town, that person can act crazy. I can't go nowhere. I have to wait till he finishes crazy. No. That's totally different. Sex on the first date and out of town first dates are two different things. Two totally different things. Eric says, most men won't hold on to something easy to acquire. Ralph says, again, it depends on the vibe. You got to be ready to handle what's going to come with that. I think it's beneficial because you know what you're getting. Hey, this is a deep one. All right, Tanika says, I'm very open with stuff like that because stuff like that happens in real life for all adults because before I have sex on the first date, I have studied the history on that man first, believe me. See? Me too. Trust me, I done been all through your Facebook friends. I done seen who liked what. I done went and asked questions about you. Trust me. Michael says he can act right just to get it. He can act right just to get it for a very long time. That, to me, like, when men say hold off on sex, if the vibe is right, it's going to happen. Well, no, I'm not going to say it like that. If the vibe is right, it can happen. You never know. I'm not going to hold it like, oh, I really want to. I shouldn't because I'm scared he's going to treat me differently. If he's going to treat me differently because I've had sex with him, then I got to, but oh, well, that's life. That means he's going to do that when I have sex with him two months from now, a month from now, 90 days from now. He's going to act that way, but that's just my opinion, but... I don't feel like it's any different from the first day to the 15th to the 30th day. It doesn't matter. I had a whole individual wait for two months and 
still ain't right. So, what's the difference? Tanika says, you know, when you're talking to a con artist or not, I don't think women are that damn stupid. I mean, and then again, we don't know. We don't be knowing men's intentions. Like, I find it childish for a man to say, oh, I lost interest because we had sex too soon. Then what was your purpose? That means your purpose was only to have sex with me. Because there is way more about me than what's between my legs. So if all you're doing is focusing on what's between my legs, like, oh, I got the sex. Now, I don't want to know anything else about her. I don't want to know if she really likes sushi or not. I don't want to try anything with her no more. I, I'm really not into her no more. I really got I, I got what I wanted. Don't that sound about right? I mean, because if you're feeling me, you're feeling me. Period. If you're feeling me, it shouldn't matter when we have sex. Period. Because that means you really dig me. You really want me. So if I base that off of, okay, he don't really want me. He don't really, he's not really feeling me. I'm going to wait to have sex. It don't matter. If he's not feeling you, he's not feeling you. Warren says, I want to know everything about you, sweetie. <sighs> Y'all a trip. All right, Tanika says, and if he asks for a head on the first date, it's definitely a bye-bye for me. Oh, oh, so we have boundaries with sex on the first date? So you're telling me you're having sex with someone, but head is off the table on the first date. So you're opening your legs, but no head. No one, you, you can't receive head and you can't give head. All right, Eric says, what's more, what's more, you never know, but what are the odds? If you hold off on sex, at least you give yourself time to look at red flags and give him time to get to know who you are. If he wants to know who I am, he's going to look past sex. Sex is just going to be an extra, a bonus. Because if he really wants to get to know me, he's going to get to know me. It doesn't matter. At least I'll know. Oh, if the sex is whack enough. Because if the sex is whack, we're not moving forward. And he won't count. And yes, men, women do that. If the sex is whack, no, you do not count. We will not recall it. Michael says, you don't know no one well enough on the first date to have sex. Uh, I mean, what kind of date should I be on? Y'all just be like, hey, I'm going to take you out. And the girls be like, okay. Nah, like, I haven't talked to people long for a while. Like, for a long while before I go on the first date. Because I don't, yeah. And if I do, well, I'll say this. Um, I'm not telling y'all my business. But if I was to think about having sex with someone on the first date, it will probably be with somebody I already pre-know. Um, not like just a new person I'm just getting to know. I'll say it will be more of someone I already knew beforehand. Like I've already been talking to, I've chilled with before. Or something like that. I don't see myself. I mean, I, I'm no judgment to anyone that has. Um, and like I said, I ain't telling y'all my business. But that's just me. Eric says, can men use that? Nah, I ain't, I ain't smashed to homework, babe. It was walk. That didn't make sense to me. Rewrite that. Grandma is really... Uh, major that that is a turn off for women sorry oh, we're 15 minutes in I'm not gonna have to move this because I'll just my phone
make sure y'all can see me, it doesn't fall. Hey, shop. We just finished talking about your favorite topic. Worm says, I just want to be around you and see what's up with you. You on here, like, going hard. I, I don't do, um, while I'm on my show, I don't do pickups. I'm sorry. But have y'all ever dated someone that y'all met off of Facebook? Have you ever smashed someone that you may, met off of Facebook? Catch me up what you miss. Um, right now we're talking about sex on the first date. Um, and right now meeting people off Facebook. Have you ever dated anyone off of Facebook or smash anyone you met off of Facebook? Because you already told me, Shock, you already told me that you are going to continue to FaceTime your homies. So... I'm sorry, y'all. Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and type it in. And I believe this might be our last topic because it is a quarter tail. Okay. Have you ever dated, um, have you ever dated or smashed someone you met on social media? Have you ever dated or smashed someone you met uh, um, online. Shock says, asking these questions is like, this is asking Hitler, do he hate Jew Jews? Oh, say, oh, that's not nice. I'm sorry. All right, Eric says, I hate to admit, but I've been meeting and smashing people on social media since MySpace. This was, this is what it was for by God. Worm said I'm a virgin. All right, Shot says, I've been popping chicks since AOL. Say <laughs> welcome. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, I maybe were off um online before. It's scary. Um, but no one I knew. Like I've never just no. I'm sorry. I have one person. Um, uh, and we're like long time friends. We're big time friends. Like that is my best friend. But um, as far as like like just meeting men online on online and smashing. No, that's scary. Like, I'm scared to go on dating websites. I don't like, like, eHarmony, Christian Mingle. Um, I think back in the days it was the personals, Yahoo personals, um, the AOL and Yahoo Messenger. Um, I've always been scared. And I'm still scared. Like, what is the other one y'all have? Um, Plenty of Fish. No, I will not. Plenty of Fish will not see Janique. Um... No, uh-uh, I've heard so many, no. Um, what is the other, there's another one where I think you slide, um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, let me read your comments here. Eric says, I mean, why ask someone out in person and, and if, I guess, in person and face rejection 
when you can do it online and simply click click to the next screen if it doesn't work out. I mean, I'm just saying, rejection is rejection. Um, I believe it it will feel the same, ain't it? If you were rejected in person. Tanika says, yes, and I will never do that again. The moment I met him, he was on a mission, and I overlooked all of it. All of the things came up missing, and I couldn't prove who it was. Next thing you know, he got bold enough to steal my debit card and spent over $500 in the mall. How did he get your debit card? What was he doing? What, so he was, like, coming to your house and stealing stuff? Oh, no. Angela says it's a it's a given though, right? Worm says I will order water and watch you eat on our date. Eric says yes, plenty of fish. Let me tell you something. See, I've only seen everybody else on plenty of fish. I'm not on plenty of fish. I can't. Um, Yo says I met my ex online and it lasts 16 years. Hey, see, and she's a pretty cool person. Shock says, "Damn, <laughs> that dude looks for licks on social media." <laughs> yeah, like he really like. I'm. How do you see those red flags though? Because usually you can see a thief. A thief usually tells you that they're a thief without actually telling you. Like, you start to see certain things. So, he was, I mean, like, how long, I, I just need more information on that. Like, that's, that's very interesting. Like, he got bold enough to steal your debit card? How long were y'all dating? Eric says, plenty of fish equals smash.com. Hey, I know some people who have met, you know, their significant others off of Plenty of Fish, and it's just fine. Tanika says, we spoke and dated a few times before he came to my house. Next thing you know, I never realized he was studying me, so social media is really an X for me. Wow. Yeah, you got to be careful. You really have to be careful. Y'all have a bump right here, and it's like bothering me. Um, I bet he sold her debit card and helped her look for it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shock, you're not going to be paying this night. But he probably did. Tanika, did he help you find it? Was he searching with you? I've never had that experience. I've never had um, a man steal from me, ever. So I can only imagine how that felt. I'd be so pissed. I would hire somebody to cut his ass. Because, nah. We ain't about to do that. How do y'all feel about kids? Do y'all feel like with the holidays coming up? Yeah, hold up. This could be our last hug. Oh, where we at? Uh, we got 10 minutes. All right, yeah. We got 10 minutes. I can have this last discussion. I can't stand these. That shit is whack. Okay, so the last discussion that we're going to have tonight is about the holidays. So, we all know Christmas is coming up. And we know, you know, it's cuffing season. Do you feel like if you just met someone, let's say a week or two, or even... If you happen to meet someone in December, should you buy them a Christmas gift? I would love to see your answers on this.
Should you buy someone a Christmas? I'm sorry. Let me make that correct. Because that was just no. Let's try that again. Should you buy a Christmas gift for someone you just met? Alright, my opinion first. Um, I don't care. Um, it depends on the vibe. It depends on if I really like you. Um, if I really like you, I might buy you some boxes. I might buy you some little white beers. You know, nothing major. Not, I'm like, I'm not going to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on you. But yeah. I might, you know... I might get you something. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable. Mm. Uh, trying not to knock down the phone and get myself comfortable. I'm sorry, I'm nosy. Maybe not my window. Alright, so let's read y'all comments. So, Tamika says, no, the fraud department called my phone suspecting fraud. I canceled it, and he looked at the surveillance, and I pressed charges quietly, beat him at his own game. He remained my friend and on Facebook and all, and I never made a status to lead him on that I knew he did. Mm-mm-mm. Trifling. All right, Shock says, it's not mandatory. Eric says, Bo, let them kids see their daddy on the holidays. <laughs> oh, my God. Mine's can. He can sure come and get his kids. I don't mind. Julia said, nope. Shock says, and if they get mad at you, I'm sorry, if they get mad at the fact you didn't, it's a problem soon to occur. Let's see here. Ralph says, there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, I don't think you're a man. You know, I don't think you have to. But, like, just me, I would. Not because I feel like I have to. But, you know, it's just, hey, you know, we've been kicking it for a little bit. What size boxes you wear? What size shirt did you wear? Hey, something small. I ain't buying no games. Eric says, hell nah. And if you ask, you not my girl. No more. Tanika says it's not mandatory, but it would be nice. Doesn't have to be big or expensive. Ralph says, what the time frame would just met. Um, I would say maybe just a few weeks ago. Or even, what if you meet them in December? What if you meet them December 1st? Yo says, no, just go buy a, a dollar tree card, wishing them a dollar card. I'm sorry. No, just go buy them a dollar card, wishing them a Merry Christmas. I appreciate that, too. That That's just a nice gesture. Hey, here's a card. I thought about you on the holidays. Uno says, hell no, ain't no Christmas. I don't wear wife beaters. Oh, okay. Hey. Eric says the Christmas come up, the Thanksgiving thirst. Alright, D'Angelo says depends on what type of gift and if I feel she is worth it. Shot said, me personally, I'll go get who's important out that out the way. If I get something, I get it. If not, then oh well, I don't think it should be an issue if you do or don't. Um, D'Angelo said, if she asks, then she's definitely S-O-L. Hey, 
I don't know, I don't think either way it goes. It's pretty much whatever. I don't I don't mind if you don't get it. I now we've been kicking it for a few months. Yeah, I will expect it, yeah. But recent, nah. Warren said I I buy her some white diamond perfume. How old is she? Don't you buy no young girl no white diamonds um perfume. We don't wear white diamonds perfume. My mother doesn't even wear white diamonds perfume. My oldest aunt and grandma wore white diamonds perfume. What? Uno says 90 day probational period. You gotta wait three weeks to get your first check on a new job. All right, Brian says depends on who it is. So y'all think it's a 90 day wait. This is according to Uno. It's a 90 day wait before you get a gift. A 90 day wait. So if you meet somebody in December and there's a 90 day wait, that means they're missing Christmas and they're missing Valentine's Day. So basically they're missing all the holidays. They're missing all the holidays. I don't mind. I don't mind getting somebody something. Something small. Just like here, I was thinking about you. You're a great friend. Well, you know, I can't wait to get to know you a little bit more. You seem like a cool person. Well, I mean, a 90 day probational period where you tell them, okay, I just met you. Okay, well, let me ask this question. If you feel like there's a 90 day probational period would you still feel that way if you met them in June or no better yet let's see here what if you met them in September Then that 90 day probational period will be over in December. So basically, you'll be getting them a gift, right? Uno says, shit, that's why you meet them in March. But hey, there's Easter in March. There's Mother's Day. And for women who are mothers... You know, they may be expecting a gift. Do you give the new, you know, the new chicks Mother's Day gifts if they're mothers? All right, Sneaker says it's almost like New Year's. Would you bring the new year in together if you just met a month ago? It's all the vibe, I guess. True. Brian says what you're going to do if they want you. Mm hmm D'Angelo says, but if she, sorry, if she gave it up on the first date, then she gets probation early. <laughs> wow. All right, Tanika says, some of these questions are easier said than done. Definitely, definitely. It's no easy question for me. Well, easy answer. I'll say that. Julia says a simple flower is a good enough for a lady. Hell, it can be picked and not brought. She'll be happy. Uno says, isn't that Olivia's song? I don't know. Ain't no Easter. She's going to play with my rabbit. Oh, see? No. No, we're not going to do that. All right, y'all. It is 11 o'clock. We had a great discussion tonight i thank you all for joining tonight um i might do a live wednesday i'm not sure since it's the day before thanksgiving because i'll be prepping just like everybody else will be prepping um getting ready for families to get together and 
you know, set up my mom's house, cooking, cutting, cleaning, and we're eating, chilling, so, hopefully. So, um, y'all have a good night, have a happy Thanksgiving, if I don't see y'all Wednesday. Peace. You hear that? Listen closer. That, my friend, is the deafening sound of focus. It drowns out all the useless noise that can clutter the moment. Naysayers don't exist. Haters? Smaters? The peanut gallery? Who's that? When you're in your zone, all that noise and all that buzz is just elevator music. So, enjoy your journey, focus on your goal, and bask in the quiet roar that is progress. Because when it's your time to shoot that shot, Spit that verse or close that deal. The only voice that matters is yours. The Fire Life.